Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about our adventures in building native support for some Linux game, or well, some Windows game launches on Linux, because God knows those people won't, uh, particularly Epic and GUG in our case. Um, let's get introductions out the way. Uh, my name is Dennis Zettler. I'm a computer science student at the University of Applied Sciences in Trier. Um, I'm primarily a developer of OBS Studio, but I also accidentally created the legendary, which is an Epic Games social replacement for Linux. We'll get to that in a bit. And my name is Pavel Lidvin. Uh, I'm a high school student, which primarily works on a Heroic Games Launcher, mainly on GOG integration, and uh, now on Amazon too. Yeah, so what have we done? Um, there are sort of four projects that we're going to talk about today. Um, Heroic is sort of the overarching one, but then the individual ones are called Legendary, GeoGDL, and Nile. Um, Legendary is what's, what kicked all of this off. I created that in 2020. It's an open source re-implementation of much of the Epic Games platform to download the games, play them, whatever. Uh, it's only a command interface, so not super user-friendly. Um, it's written in Python, it's GPL v3, and best I can tell, it has about 100,000 uh, monthly active users, a bit, bit more, most through Heroic. I'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, it's open source, of course, um, and way more successful than I thought. Um, then Heroic came around, so this was created by Flavio, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. Um, he created it as a graphical user interface for Legendary initially, so just the Epic Game Store. Uh, it's built in Electron, but it's not too bad <laughs> for that. Um, yeah, like Legendary itself, it learns on Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Um, and it has since expanded to also support the uh, games from GOG, good old games, as well as the Amazon Games Launcher, which I'm sure many of you don't even know exists. Uh, and now let Pablo introduce his project. Um, so, uh, GeoGDL uh, is the CLI application made for specifically for Geo Heroic Games Launcher. It's written in Python and uh, it only interfaces with uh, things like downloading uh, games from their uh, Galaxy API. Uh, also, uh, it supports cloud saves, which is uh, un uh, just really surprising for uh, applications that are unofficial and um, are not really uh, supported by GOG. Um, so uh, next one is Nile. Uh, it's based on Dennis's twdl.py. Uh, this is CLI only application at the moment. Although I had initial plans for GUI, like you can see on the screenshots. Uh, here are the uh, initial projects of how it will look like. This is actually running uh, in libadvita, also written in Python. And it's this license under GPL three. So why are we doing this? So uh, most of you probably use launchers like GOG, Galaxy, maybe Epic Games Store, maybe others like Humble Bundle. So it's ease of use. When we implement launcher from scratch, we can control every aspect of it, make it support Linux, macOS and to Windows and make it maybe better. Uh, of course, freedom of choice. This is the biggest strength of PC platform as a whole. Fun challenge for us developers with, of course, this is mostly driving us towards uh, gaming calls too. And spite, more on that. Right. right, so spite is a very powerful motivator to create open source applications. Yeah. So in my case, while Legendary exists, uh, I backed the game on Kickstarter, it became Epic exclusive. The Epic Games Launcher is crap. The Windows Service Daemon, even worse. I'll get to that in a bit. So I made my own. Solved. Let's, get, let's talk a bit about the mess. So the Launcher runs Unreal Engine to show you a web UI using Chromium Embedded Framework. The Windows Daemon is written in Node, but it is run by a .NET app for some reason. If you install everything, you get two copies of Unreal Engine, six copies of Chromium, and it takes up 1.6 gigabytes. It's a mess. And then you can see some of the other fun stuff. Like the daemon has Chromium for UI, it has native mode, no module for IPC, and Unreal Engine for downloading stuff. Why not? And of course, one of the great things with Heroic is we want to unify things a little bit because there are just too many of these goddamn launchers. So how did we do this? Um, well, documentation would be nice. It doesn't exist for the most part. Um, Itch.io is pretty nice. They have uh, a fully open source client. You can just check it. They also have some documentation for it, but they are really the only ones. 
Uh, reverse engineering, of course, network capture, doing a bit of key draw work. Always fun. Pro tip, if you check Mac OS binaries, they often have symbols in the case of Mac, uh, of Epic stuff. Pretty good to figure out how everything goes together, especially all the proprietary nonsense they do. Um, they also sometimes pre-existing projects. So we already heard Pavel mention, I have this TW API he could use as a reference for uh, the Amazon Games game launcher back then was the Twitch Games launcher, which didn't work out. Uh, LGG downloader also exists. OTool for Origin, but it only can download. It's kind of incomplete. And then there was also EGL2, which is for the Epic Games launcher, but it only supports Fortnite. So not interesting. Right, and then trial and error. Just you know, just guess how things go together. And sometimes, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, that was a fun lesson. Well, where are we at right now? With support, so for features, we have the main ones down, so you can download the games, update them, DLC, uh, legendary supports, online authentication, and DRM, which is nice. So you can do multiplayer. You can install the in-game overlay, which has most of the social features. Uh, you can do selective downloading, so if you have games that have different language packs, all that works. And you can use all the versions of games if you have the manifest, which um, is mainly interesting for people like speedrunners or reverse engineer people uh, that need all the versions of games. Uh, what's not supported? Mod support, Epic Games Platform has mod support. There are like two games that use it. Nobody ever asked me about it. I don't know, playtime tracking is something that people like. I don't care. So I can support it. Uh, replacement for the Epic service. I mentioned it's a mess. I would like to have an open source replacement for it. But there's only really one game right now that requires it, it which is Fall Guys, I think. Maybe one day. And there's social features like friends and all that stuff. You can do it through um, the in game overlay for the most part, but it would be nice to have that in like heroic or whatever. So you can at least do like invites and things like that, which we don't have right now. They also used to have chat in their client. They just disabled it in 2021 at some point and hasn't come back since. I don't know why. Uh, so for GeoGDL, uh, we currently support all the features that you expect from the working client, downloading, verifying, updating, uh, DLCs, uh, cloud saves, however, only on Windows and Mac, uh, because uh, the API doesn't really support Linux native builds. So we don't know where the files are stored. We cannot sync them properly. We could build our uh, database on that, uh, our own one, um, but this is the plans for future. Uh, of course, you can download all their versions of games, which also includes only Windows and Mac builds. Uh, again, API limitation, it's not supported for Linux builds. We only have offline installers supported by GOG, which are only latest ones. We cannot roll back like Windows and Mac. Uh, so currently missing features are everything online. So multiplayer achievements, statistics, and leaderboards. This requires us implementing the uh, uh, the Galaxy Communication Service that EXD. So this is the the daemon that runs with GOG Galaxy. It basically runs a TCP server on your lo locally, uh, which allows uh, games to connect to it, uh, ask for authentication, um, and other than fun stuff. Uh, so around Nile, well, Amazon Games doesn't really have that much features. So we actually split that uh, features to separate points just to make it look bigger. I mean, look, the listing games, downloading, verifying, and updating, that's all that their client has supports. There is no cloud saves, there's no statistics, there's no playtime tracking, only locally. So only missing feature is a Twitch app leftover, which is a fuel pump DRM. We don't actually have any games that support it at the moment. Uh, if you we're a long time user, you probably have some. And uh, the platform reaction to our work, um, we were approached by GOG and they really liked our work. So they said, thank you. Uh, we made, uh, mostly because uh, we, we allow users to support uh, Steam Deck, Linux, and make it really approachable for new users uh, to get their hands on their, those games. So what's next? So future plans and dream section. Um, we want to support the online features via Comet. Uh, this is the currently working project. It's, it's currently written in Python, but we are going to rewrite in Rust. Um, to make it support simultaneous collection, connections and uh, maybe support more offline gameplay so we can still have statistics uh, while being offline. 
uh, more features from Linux native games. Uh, we want to have uh, features similar to what we can expect from Windows and Mac builds. So maybe rollback feature in the future, but that requires cooperation with GOG. I'm not sure if we will have that uh, at any time. Um, also, mods for Epic. It's not that important at the moment. However, it's something that we want. To, we have to keep in mind. Uh, EOS service, like Dennis mentioned a little earlier, the daemon replacement around that weird ODJS thing. And rewriting everything in Rust, uh, that's only a joke. And we want to support new platforms. So we have the idea of Indigala, which is currently working. It's written in Rust, a CLI application. Uh, you can check it out in the URL here. Um, so it's, uh, it's really early stages. However, you can already use it, download games, and it's already faster than the official client, which is interesting. Uh, However, official client, maybe its limitation is that it's completely written in Node. So it doesn't have multi-threading for downloading and uh, that stuff. Uh, we want to support Ubisoft uh, and EA. Well, those are kind of hard because of DRM and other features. Ubisoft, I think, has two or three types of DRM currently, depending on the um, how old the game is. Uh, EA, we are not currently sure how we will approach this. There is the O2 project, which we mentioned earlier. And, uh, well, it only downloads games. Probably the API got deprecated because of EA app. Uh, so we need to probably redo everything. Um, we also, we have the big question mark around I Xbox, uh, which is thing uh, that requires also a lot of work in Wine. Um, we don't know if we will uh, approach this in uh, any future soon. Uh, however, this is something we kind of dream on. And who knows? So other projects. Yeah. I guess just to add to the um, platform reactions, Epic has never said anything to me. I know they are aware of the project, but they have never contacted me. Um, so yeah, there are other approaches, of course, to solve this issue with like getting games from things that are on Steam on uh, Linux, like Lutris, of course, which uh, uses the native launchers, Bottles, uh, Crossover, especially if you're on Mac. Um, those do mostly aggregation from official launchers. So also there are other projects like GOD Galaxy itself and Playnite on Windows that just launch the official launcher to launch the game, which is yeah, not as nice, but it works fine. Um, there are... Other reverse engineering projects, of course, for Ubisoft, there are actually two, UBRE and UplayDB. They have actually done a lot of work. I think the DRM part is not quite figured out, but they had a lot of the downloading stuff already. So DRM-free games might be doable for new play, and there are probably a few. Um, yeah, for Steam, there's Steamery. They, uh, I think, are affiliated with SteamDB, so they already have figured that out. Um, Open Xbox is interesting. And they have done a bit of work to get authentication done and stuff like that. But obviously, with UWP and stuff like that, it's a bit more complicated on Linux. Uh, and then there's also GOG to be, um, the guy has been uh, helpful to us, so also shout out to him for that. Uh, then there are other launcher replacements, of course, like what we do, like Min Galaxy for GOG, LGOG download a bit older, can't launch games, can only download uh, Otil for Origin, we already mentioned that. And then, of course, Lutris has support for some native games like the Amazon launcher, GOG, H.io, Humble Bundle. I think maybe also the uh, EA, right? Yeah, but native download? Uh, yeah, the native. Uh, yeah, right. uh, yeah, cool. I think the Amazon stuff was also based on my old project there, which is kind of funny. Um, and yeah, then we want people to get involved. We have a Discord. I wanted to get like a GitHub repo set up, but hadn't had the time. So if people want to help us out with reverse engineering, especially, that would be great. Uh, also, maybe if you want to rewrite it in Rust, be my guest. I don't care. Um, and that's it already. So shout out to these guys. Those are some of the other heroic people that have been very great over the years, especially Command MC for helping me with Epic stuff because I don't really game a lot on Linux, so he's been figuring out all the stupid workarounds you have to do. Um, and that's it from us, right? Yep, that's it for us. For us. Thank you. So, uh, I think it's a part for questions. You can have the uh, box, the talking box. I'll leave this up if you want to Yep. So um, is there going to be any plans for um, downloading assets for the Epic Unreal Engine? No, 
there is a thing called Epic. Um, there is a thing called Epic Asset Manager, which is written in Rust, which does a much better job than I ever could do because the person writing it is actually building games with Unreal Engine. But it's fully open source. It's somewhere on GitHub. Um, pretty cool. Thank you for a great talk. Um, so, a uh, question about so many platforms limit the freedom by not allowing you to provide it user reviews for the games. So, mm -hmm. any plans for maybe do I don't know cross-platform user reviews? I don't I don't uh, yeah. think ensure that it will be thank you from mm -hmm. platform owners. I don't know. I mean, there are some things planned with like heroic to like do a compatibility database and stuff like that to make things a little bit more easy to figure out. But I'm not sure anybody wants to do reviews. <laughs> it's like, we're not selling games, like we, we're just allowing you to play them. Okay, thank you. Seems dangerous. Yeah, almost got killed. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, thanks for the, the talk and also the stuff you do, guys. Uh, I mean, this question is mostly like uh, out of curiosity. Um, so there is there was a video by the Louis Rossman, the the guy. Yeah. He's rant over the Mazda because Mazda sent a cease and desist letter to a developer who developed a third party plugin for the home automation. So my question is, do you guys receive a lot of that kind of things from you know the the vendors because you know you tickle their API basically you make mm. part of their work doesn't matter and look like crap. Yeah. So. I mean, Epic doesn't seem to care. Uh, as I said, I know they are aware of my project. They have multiple people that have like started with the repo on GitHub that have Epic Games as the employer, but it's I have never received anything from them. I don't expect them to like. There are like I mentioned EGL two, which is like just for Fortnite. Tim Sweeney actually. Wish happy birthday to the author of that on Git on Twitter. So I'm fairly confident that they don't care, and that they won't really go after me. Um, and if they do, I'm just going to say I'm in Europe. Get lost. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but also like the the TOS or ULOT, there's actually nothing in there about reverse engineering. So cool. Thank you. Anyone else want to shine box? <laughs> So I have integration with like native launchers. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be possible to um, have some integration, hybrid integration, with, like both the native launcher and some Linux native? I mean, so this is some already so what I do like in Lutris mm -hmm. uh, to some degree. But would it be possible to get this like one step further and like do most of the things? in like a native implementation uh, while uh, keeping the native launcher around like for like what's missing. Yeah, so I'm not sure about GDL, but here, uh, Legendary can sync with the Epic Games launcher uh -huh. uh, bidirectionally. I think there are some issues with it nowadays because they changed some stuff, but it still works for the most part. Um, but on Linux limitation, it, is, it can only sync with one installation. And I know if you have multiple um, uh, bottles or prefixes with app installation set is maybe a bit problematic. It's not something I've looked into too much because it's not a huge priority for me. Cool. Uh, you said there were some issues with uh, cloud saves on Linux. Could you maybe elaborate more on that? Um, the, the only part uh, that doesn't work really, I mean, uh, cloud saves work generally for Windows games, but they don't for Linux. That's because the API does not include the path where the saves are stored on Linux. So if we if we have the native game, we don't know where they store the saves. It's not really uh, some games don't really respect the XDG standard. Some games store it directly in home. It's kind of weird around that. So there's no path. Uh, we we can build uh, our own database like like I mentioned, and maybe we will do that in the future. Thank you. Um, there's going to be uh, an API that will provide um, cloud safe information for like all games. So you can use that at some point in the future. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you.